What's up, everyone? I'm back with a special guest for another real review, and just I'm glad to see Jeff again. It's been a while since I've seen Jeff, and his internet isn't acting up for once. That's weird because guess what? There is a whole ass outage here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but no, how, how have you been, buddy? It's been a while. Uh, it's been busy, so you know, just watching a lot of movies. And then also work, and then more movies, and then occasionally I go out and I drink a lot. <laughs> you know, and it's funny considering he was on the biggest TV show kick for the longest. Yeah, no, there was like a month and a half that I just didn't watch a movie. Yeah. yeah. But here we are, we're back. You got to see him uh, back when we did Banshees of an Instrument. I can't remember. Um, and when we did a review roundup, which we got to do one of those soon. We're back to yeah. uh, uh, we're back up to being three months behind again, just about. Yep. <laughs> Covering April, May, June, June, and now July. It's going to be four months. <laughs> oh, I thought we did some of April in, in the. No, last we've, we filmed at the beginning of June or end of. We've, yeah, we did. We, we, we did. we covered April in the last one. We covered we April, covered so it's April. May, June, July. Okay, so three, so months. three right. months. Three months. All right. Okay. All right. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll cover it. We'll cover it at the end of July. I got a few more yeah. days. Fit in a few more right. days. All right. But uh, if you're here, you're clearly here not to hear us talk about other movies. You want to know about Disney's Haunted Mansion, the second attempt at telling a story based on this classic Disney ride. Um, first off, I do want to say the Eddie Murphy movie has its moments, I guess. It but definitely it, exists. It definitely exists. But it's he a movie. <laughs> he, he got paid. But it's a movie most of us probably haven't seen in damn near two decades. Uh, so with that in mind, it's really nice to have a refreshing new tale about that possibly could have the potential of being next of of being Disney's next ride franchise. They tried with Jungle Cruise, Pirates has been the only real successful one, but could Haunted Mansion join that family? So Jeff, just real quick, what are your brief thoughts about the film? So just just to run down real quick, um, you know, saying that the movie is about the ride, that doesn't really say anything. There's a little bit of story in right. there, but like, how does that work as a narrative for a film? The story is about a single mother and her son go to move into this big house in Louisiana, and it turns out that it's haunted. And in order to help combat those ghosts, they enlist the aid of an astrophysicist, a priest, a, and a medium, as well as a college professor that happened to have written some uh, written a book on ghosts and on uh, hauntings. And I think that overall, when you look at the cast, and, which is a bizarre mix of, of actors, yes. let's be honest. Um, we have Lakeith Stanfield and Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, Rosario, Rosario Dawson, Dawson. Curtis, Jared and, Leto. Uh, Jer yeah, that guy. Uh, <laughs> He's also in it. Um, it's it's a weird mix. And yes. I have to say, while I didn't love this movie, um, I did enjoy myself. I thought it was pretty cute. Uh, it's sufficiently spooky as a kid's horror comedy goes. Um, it's, not, it, it's not super scary, but it's not trying to be super scary. It's trying to evoke more of that gothic, the gothic horror feel rather than actually try to have big jump scares in it. And I think that it works best as a story of grief and how one can overcome grief and the overwhelming despair that it puts one in when you lose a loved one. Uh, that is something that I found to be very surprising about this movie. I didn't think I didn't I figured it was gonna have something up its sleeve because the creative yeah. team is so bizarre. Um, when you have uh, Katie Dippold, um, she's more of a comedy writer uh, since she wrote Ghostbusters, ironically, um, for Paul Feig back in 2016, another movie that I think leaned a little too heavily on ghosts being CGI and not practical effects i think it takes yeah. away from the atmosphere it's trying to build but she also wrote 
uh, The Heat, which was very funny action comedy. So here um, we have that interesting comedy writer with Justin Simeon directing. The director of Dear White People. Which I haven't watched the movie Dear White People, but I watched the first three out of four seasons of the Netflix show. And, and he directed a lot of that too. Yeah, he directed a lot of that. And that's a really good show. I, I eventually mean to get around to the final season. It just haven't because there's so much out there yeah. and he his last movie was another horror comedy too bad hair i didn't yes. catch it either neither um, did i this is so this is my first justin simeon film and so my introduction to him as a director of a movie is a big budget studio horror comedy this did not need to be 160 million dollars this did no, it not didn't. need to be two hours. This movie should have been 95 minutes uh, trim, just in and out, being able, but giving sufficient scares, some jokes, as well as throwing in that theme of grief because that really works. There's a lot no, of stuff that, that I need to yes. I'm just continuing to talk. Why don't I stop? No. Actually, let me, why don't, why don't you jump in? There <laughs> well, no, you actually you've nailed a lot of, of what I think about it because. I, I thought it's gonna it's gonna do the right job of of making horror fans happy and probably creating new horror fans and young children because this is how you start warming kids up to horror and there are very horror filled moments that are gonna scare a kid and as an adult you're sitting there like you you didn't get me but if I was little you would have got me like yes and that was great. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield is phenomenal in this. He's uh, great, but um, let's just <laughs> Lakeith Stanfield is, is always great great. in this. He's, you don't need to add the in this. He's just he's always great. great. He's <laughs> always on. There are moments in this where the way he looks and stuff, and the way he reacts to ghosts and shit is incredible. Just like, he, 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 this, just like he, he didn't treat it like right a payday off. film. He didn't no, treat it like he, a payday film, which you were afraid of when he like, takes a big. To me, it felt like he like the way he reacted to a lot of ghost stuff, and and dealt with uh, certain things like his skepticism and and questioning stuff. Felt natural. It felt it felt like he just walked off the set of Atlanta, and he was still sort of in character. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. He was great, and I really loved him as the lead in this. And I I think that the movie wouldn't be nearly as – you wouldn't care as much. You might still have fun right. with some of the more haunted house pieces, Elements. but you wouldn't care no, that, if it that, wasn't for Lakeith Stanfield. I think. That is exactly how I feel. Uh, Rosario Dawson, it's nice to see her in film. She's, uh, again, just another character – another actor who doesn't – who, who seems to never mail it in, which you got to respect. But Danny DeVito had me laughing my ass off. Danny DeVito <laughs> came in, and I think a couple things. One, he was so irritating, I think, in a lot of moments. Yes. And I think that your, your mileage may vary on Danny DeVito as an actor. And I think that how you normally react to him is how you're going to react to him here. He's not doing anything new. This is very much just a a ghost obsessed version of Frank Danny Reynolds Reynolds. from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But um, yeah, a, a more PG version yeah. of Frank Reynolds. Uh, yes, there, more, there were moments where I felt PG like I, I saw. I, there were moments I there felt like there was things. Frank Reynolds called. He back. said, a, "He said a PG version of what a Frank, uh, but exactly at the moment <laughs> where Frank Reynolds would ruin a moment or something, but in exactly the way. Listen, he did exactly what you wanted Danny DeVito to do in a supernatural haunted house horror comedy featuring Danny DeVito. It, it, it felt like the direct, children. It felt like the casting director saw what he did in Jumanji the last or the next level, yes. and we're like, could you take that?" And apply it to this for for a longer period of time where you're actually doing that acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, he's very enjoyable. Uh, um, I do want to I do want to give uh, uh, some props to the young actor uh, Chase Dillon. Yes, uh, I was very impressed. Ch- child actors, I don't like to talk about them a lot because let's be honest, that is always a hard thing to peg down. 
because yes. they're they're so young, they're still new to this business. They're Not still every child actor can be Henry Thomas and ET. Exactly. But for what he had to work with, this kid did a, a great job. He's yes, he, he gets you invested, you feel for him, and that's hard to do with uh I'll be honest. I did not see there. There, there is the twist in this. I did not see that twist coming, uh, where I was like, "Oh, oh, okay, that's interesting." I think I know exactly what you're talking about, and I figured it out as soon as it, like a setup was established before the bait and switch. There, I figured that out right see, away. I'm like, "This isn't what they're gonna do," and then they ended up doing what I thought they were gonna do. But See, it, they it, did a it, good it, job trying to swap. But it look, it's good. Yeah, it, 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 it's it, fun. It's there, yeah. it doesn't break the bank. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't rewrite the laws of Twister. It doesn't actually right. change much in the movie itself. But no, but I, I, I guess that I it didn't hit me until the moment before when he said he was going to reach out to that character. The moment, the moment it was going to happen. Yes, I yeah. think that it is. I think that it wasn't – it was obvious, but I think that just like the rest of the movie, it is surprisingly emotional. Yes. I think that it matters. It, it It's where it matters. Yes. The delivery of it, a lot of stuff is wonky. I think that the script overall is – it's pretty it, – you know, it, it's pretty lukewarm, like the screenplay itself. Yeah. You know, no no offense to, if, to Katie Dippold. If, if it but, weren't for these performances, then it would this just movie fall, would fall apart. Like then, then this it would movie just, be just a relies on this cast. It would be a cacophonous sound stage filled with computer generated ghosts, uh, like you know, jump scare thon. But yes. it's not that because they have actors in there that you actually care about. Uh, someone else we haven't talked about is Owen Wilson, who <laughs> I thought Owen Wilson was the most useless character for so long in this movie. Yep. It just it, felt like he was a punchline and it felt so bizarre. I'm like this can't be what's happening. And, and then it's ex it, it ends up working out yes, a little it, bit. I guess the easiest way, easiest way to put it is he's kind of like the Nick Fury of this movie where he's bringing all these characters he together does. and okay, just yeah. sitting he back does. and seeing what happens. That is a bizarre way to phrase it, but yes, but it's true. He, does. He, do, he he is someone who ends up kind of pulling all these people together. He's not even the one that starts it all. He just kind right. of shows up and then starts getting people to help out. It's, it's a weird role, and I think that, once again, a lot of stuff that's very, like, you know, as far as comedies go, this is pretty hit or miss. Yes. But I think the hits are cute. Uh, I think a lot of the misses are either flat or they're like, ah, huh, they're cute. Huh. The hits, I think some of them are very funny. Most of them yes. come from Danny DeVito. Some of the other stuff really does come from Owen Wilson. And um, Lakeith has his moments, too. Yeah, if you've Lakeith watched Atlanta, his... you know his comedic timing is just Yeah, oh, his, his, he's, he's great. <laughs> um, I think that uh, if I had to have a weak a weak person in the cast. Tiffany it Haddish. Might, it might be Tiffany Haddish. Because I think that I, there were some things that were funny, but I, then it, it it felt like she kept going in and out of whether or not she's Tiffany Haddish or, or the if character. she's this character. I think her performance uh, was inconsistent. I I felt the same way, but I, I, I couldn't figure out if I attributed that more to the script or who she is. I thought it was both because she didn't – the way she delivered things, the way yes. she acted were back and forth. And yes. I get it. It's maybe she's this person acting more like a medium in this way. Yes. Sure, I get it. But it just – it still – it didn't feel consistent. And I think it was a combination of what's on the page with how it ends up being delivered. Lakeith Stanfield, he did a much better job of taking what's on the page and <laughs> – how and then deliver yeah, I, I mean and I, I, what we know Jamie Lee Curtis is in the movie yeah uh, she's she's, she's in the movie in the movie and she's <laughs> fine I don't know like she's just like oh look she, at Jamie Lee Curtis she, yeah she's 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 the one collecting paychecks where it's just like yep okay this but yeah 
Uh, I will say the paycheck covered her trip to the Oscars. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'll say this: there are times where the CGI is spotty, which it feels like that's just becoming the thing nowadays with big budget. Not films. a great thing. Not a great. Not thing. a great thing. But no. uh, the the hat box ghost for the. For the most I, part, it it's a, it's a love hate. Re- it's a love hate relationship because there are times where it looks too cartoony, but for yeah. the most part, it works. What I do want to say is, really yes. Yeah. What I do want to say is, for uh, the Disney Parks fans, you will be happy coming out of this movie. I took one of my be- one of my best friends, Ryan, who's actually one of my best men for my wedding, and he is a Disney Parks head. He literally goes to. Uh, Disney, whether it be Disneyland or Disney World, three to five times a year. Um, vacation club member. No, they, they no. just Jeez. pull pull out. They just go that often. Um, his, he and his family. But uh, just quick shout out to him. He, for me at least, Are I feel watching? like he, <laughs> he. Yeah, he probably is. But uh, he actually, I feel like enhanced my viewing because him knowing. Both just the Haunted Mansion, I need to preface, is one of his favorite rides. So, him knowing so much about the history and wh- how each ride's different and all that, pointing things out, little Easter eggs and moments, I felt like actually really enhanced my viewing uh, and made me enjoy it a little bit more because you got, you got a better understanding of the detail and care that the creative team put behind this film. So, that was really cool to me. Yeah, um, it was very clear uh, the the little homages and references and stuff and uh, to things from the ride. Um, I will say it's in the trailer. Uh, we all know, or at least it's circulated on the internet. There is uh, a cute image uh, at the ride of like a candle ghost. Um, I don't know who designed the candle ghost in this movie, but. Um, Keith Stanfield there holding the dick. He was holding the dick. And it was weird uh, to just see that in a child's film. Um, and this is, I mean, yeah, we get it. It looks like one of those, like, the, the stalagmite things in, like, The Little Mermaid or whatever. But it's just bizarre. It's, it, was, it was weird to see that. And it was bad CGI, too. It was yes. just an odd choice. But overall, it, it's a fun movie. Um, it's... One that I think that would be a really great entry point for young children to get them invested in the horror genre. I think it's yes. cute enough for them. Um, it's silly enough that it'll keep their attention. Uh, the children in my theater, I found them, I heard them kind of giggling a little bit a lot during like actual like creepy moments where it's supposed to be spooky. So it meant like they were engaging with it. They were having yes. fun with it. And that's cool. Uh, that's really enjoyable to see. And I don't, I, I don't think that it's as to compare two Jack Black films together, actually. Yeah. With this. this is not, this is no the house with a clock in its walls. But it, I would say that it's close to Goosebumps. So if you're going to give this film rating, what are you giving it, Jeff? I'd give this a three of five. I can, I can understand that. Me personally, if I'm going to rate this film, I'm going three and a half out of five. Like I said, I think having the the encyclopedia <laughs> essentially right next to me did it help bump that score up for me. But it's a fun time. Uh I know you, Paige, and I have talked about maybe we have to get together and do a Barbenheimer review, just weekend review. You guys can do that better than I can because you got to, do, you especially got to do it properly. But uh, I mean, right now, I, th- I think this is a good little pocket for cinema because you had Mission Impossible 7, Barbie, Oppenheimer, and I, after about a month of uh, Elemental just chilling in theaters and slowly becoming a hit. Uh, you, you get another family f- fun movie to, to just end the summer with. Uh, before we get, I, what do we have left? TMNT, Blue Beetle, uh, a week T- later. T- TMNT a week later, and then we have Blue Beetle. So, like, it, it we, we're in this nice little 
pocket of we know summer's about to end. So here's some stuff for families to enjoy when they're looking for stuff in these last few days. But uh, that's it, folks. This is our review of the Haunted Mansion. I want to thank Jeff for coming on and doing this with me because I've missed seeing his face and talking movies with him. So it was it was nice to just talk about a I don't miss my face, but then again, that's because I see it in the mirror every day. <laughs> All right. But thank you again, Jeff. And thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and follow everything we do over here at Watt Real Entertainment. Be sure to check out Watt Gaming, which is our uh, gaming channel. That's where the Twitch VODs go to live after we're done with Twitch. Uh, Taylor is doing a fantastic job of running that channel. Uh, Jeff recently made his debut in one of the wrestling streams that uh, we do over there. So be sure to check all that out. But, yeah, signing off. He's Jeff. I'm Matt. This was another real review, and I'll see you next time, folks.